Hello, my name is Bill Griswold, and I'm here today with Gordon Lyman. We are here to provide an instructional video on the rigging load calculation form. In fact, there will be two videos. The first video will show you how to set up the form, and the second provides a practical example using the form. The rigging load calculation form was created through a cooperative effort by eSystem Training Solutions and Griswold Tower Software. The form provides automatic calculation of the load forces. These forces include those on the rigging system and on the structure itself. The integrated pages self-populate. It has an integral rigging plan document built right into the system and the form is free for all industry users. This instructional video on the rigging load calculation form was created with the support of Stack for its members and for the telecommunications industry. eSystem Training Solutions is a web-based training company specializing in courses specific to the telecommunications industry. Gordon Lyman and Dominique Valdez are the principals of eSystems and have a combined experience of over 60 years in all phases of the telecommunications industry. Griswold Tower Software is a professional structural engineering company covering special projects throughout the world. Bill Griswold, hey, that's me, is the president and chief engineer of the company. I've got over 45 years of engineering experience and during this engineering career, I've worked on over 10,000 structures. So, as we cover how to set up the form, you're gonna to wanna to download the form, and the website for that is shown on the screen. I must point out that the rigging load form runs inside of Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel versions 2007 and earlier will not properly support the software, and it won't run. The equations are protected to prevent accidental changes. Now, we will briefly review the tabs in the document, and if you wish, you can open your document and follow along. First time you start the program, a trust warning and enable content bar may come up. You must accept or enable these to allow all of the program features to work correctly. If a blue dash line appears, on any of the screens, just drag it to the right side of the screen. This is a page break line. Now, the Excel tabs that are within this spreadsheet include the menu sheet, the rigging plan, types one, two, and three lists, an angle chart, a face block mount, equipment tab, a contacts tab, a rope chart tab, the extra sequence sheet, we'll go into what that is later, and rigging requirements. There are three general sections on the menu sheet. In the upper left are the project information cells. In the upper right are cells for your company, your project information, and the blocks and hoists that are gonna be used for the particular project. At the bottom of the sheet are navigation buttons for each of the three lift types and an angle calculation form. Now the rigging plan page itself, this is where everything is gonna to come together. It contains input information from the other pages. It contains structure data, the project equipment that you're gonna be using, the tag method to be used, and the load lifting materials that you're planning on using for this project. Now, further down on the same sheet is a location for the scope of work description, the loads from the calculation page that you have selected, general information for the project, description of the work sequence, and description of a reinforcing sequence if that's gonna be what's happening on this particular project. In the case where you don't have enough room on either the work sequence or reinforcing sequence, there's an extra page. Should give you more than enough room for that. All right, we're now gonna go through the three different types of lifts. There's three tabs for that. 
The lifted load on each of these tabs is coming from the menu page. You're going to select the tower type and the number of line parts that you want to use for the particular lift. And on the type 1, you're going to specify the location of the crown block on the tower. And you're going to provide the uh, location of both the load hoist and the tag hoist. The weights of the lines in the friction load from the blocks are automatically added into the forces. And then these forces are provided directly on the sheet, showing the forces on the lift system itself, as well as what's being applied to the tower. Similarly, with the Type 2 lift, the load's coming from the menu sheet. You're going to select the tower type. You're going to specify the location of the crown block and the distance out to the hoist. Once again, the weights of the lines and the friction from the blocks is being automatically added. And again, it is providing the forces on the lift system and on the tower. Type 3, real difference here is that we've now got a heel block. So again, the lifted load is coming from the menu page. You're going to select the tower type and the number of line parts. You're going to specify the location of the crown block, the load and tag hoist as well. The weights of the lines and the friction from the blocks once again is being automatically added. And these forces are now being shown again on the lift system and on the tower. The angle finder is a very simple page or tool that's provided to help you determine the angles at the hoist. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, let's talk about the face block mount page. The job information from the menu page on this page, as well as all the other pages, is automatically showing up from the menu page. Information is imported from the selected rigging type page. And then you're going to select the slings and their arrangements. You're going to input the tower face width at the sling attachment locations, and the program is going to provide the forces and tell you if the slings are sufficient. The equipment tab. The equipment tab covers your hoist, your blocks, and your slings. And this is where you are going to record all of your lifting equipment information. And then there's the contacts page. The program gives you a place to list your competent rigor, to list the contractor contact or project manager, a qualified person, you may have several in your company, and the qualified engineer that you like to work with. All the listed names and examples, except the qualified engineer, are merely examples in this. Phone numbers, however, should not have any spaces or special characters because the software is automatically going to add that for you on the appropriate forms. Now let's talk about the wire rope chart. This is where you're going to have the cable description. You're going to talk about the safe working load, the minimum breaking strength, the weight per foot for each of the cables, and whether the wire or synthetic material is being used. Why would you want all this? Well, quite simply, this is where the program determines if you're putting too much load on, on a particular cable or on a particular hoist, and this is where it's coming up with the weights. Now, the rigging requirements, this is simply a quick reference that's taken out of the A1048, and it has the rigging plan requirements for class one, two, three, and four lifts. Now, the master copy. Once you have downloaded the spreadsheet, you want to create and save a master copy. This copy will have all of your company information, including your logo, all of your equipment, and all of your contacts. Once created, we also suggest that you save an additional backup copy. Input cells. Any of the cells that are white or peach colored background are for data input. If the cells are shaded, they are drop-down cells. These cells are getting their information from other pages of the spreadsheet. Some of the cells on the rigging plan page change color and become input cells depending on the class of the lift. And we'll get into some of that in the next video. Changing the tower type picture. 
The tower drawings in each of the lift type pages can be either a monopole, a self-support, or a guide tower. You use the drop-down cell to select the type of tower. If the drop-down does not work, you may need to right mouse click on it to wake it up. Now, we also have navigation buttons located throughout the spreadsheet. The, the purpose of these is simply for the ease of moving around the spreadsheet. However, you can use the tabs at the bottom of the Excel program if you so wish. All right, we're gonna go back now to the menu sheet and help you set up your master copy. The first step in creating your company master copy is putting your company information into the menu sheet. The information will be placed into almost all of the different sheets within the program. Next, you're gonna put your company logo onto the rigging plan sheet. I had to come up with a name and a logo, and so I hope the Roadrunner doesn't mind. The first step is to copy and paste your logo into PowerPoint. Then copy the logo from PowerPoint and paste it into the upper left corner of the rigging plan sheet. Now let's go to the equipment page. This page allows you to build in your hoist, your blocks, and your slings. So you need to list all applicable hoist, blocks, and slings in the appropriate columns. If you have several identical pieces of equipment, only list them one time. Provide the rated working capacity of each of these items. Provide the lengths of the slings. Several examples have been provided in the copy that you downloaded. However, these are only examples and can be changed to the names, capacities, and lengths of your equipment. So here, we're looking at the different names, the hoist, the block, and the slings. Create names relevant to the equipment. I strongly suggest that they include the capacities because these names are gonna show up on the type lift pages next to each piece of equipment. Then you're gonna put in the working capacity of each of these. And then on the hoist themselves, you've got to select the cables. So the values are coming from the rope chart page and the program is making sure that the working capacity of the hoist is not greater than the safe working load of the cable that you've chosen. If it does exceed, then you're gonna get a warning, and I have not provided an example of that in this. All right, the block bearings. The program applies additional load to the lift based on the types of bearings in each of the blocks. Roller and bronze have different shiv friction values and therefore change the values of the loads in the load calculations. The sling lengths. The length of each of the slings should be the total length expressed in feet. The program handles slings for face mounted blocks and is shown at the bottom of the face block mount page. Future revisions. Currently in planning are the addition of a type five and a type six lift configuration. We've had a lot of requests for these. A type five is a dedicated trolley tag. And in this case, the tagline starts at the hoist and dead ends either into the structure or the gin pole. A type six is an inverted trolley tag. The tagline is fixed at the ground, goes through the crown block, down to the heel block, and then back to the hoist. This completes this instructional video on how to set up the form. The next video provides an example of how to use this spreadsheet.